Hi. Welcome Hello. To the League Championships. I am Eric Froelich. I am joined by the luckiest Gian and the fifth ranked Gian of everyone involved in Super League. All Gian. Yeah. Well, at least I'm in the top five now of something. Only of the people involved and affiliated with Super League. Yes. As far as I know. Those rankings may not be reflected by. I think new rankings come out on Thursday. Is that how that works? Yeah. So, unlikely to, to maintain your status, but still, not bad. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. I'll give it my all. Like I was telling the people before, when, uh, at least for uh, the when we play against each other, uh, when we play each other, uh, that's the number one Chion actually going off. But when we play each other, uh, I felt feel like the Esper deck's probably supposed to be favored, but putting the, the skill matchup, you know, combining those two, I, I feel like it might be close to 50-50. Yeah, and then once you factor in luck, I can't win. Yeah, uh, well, so, I mean. <laughs> what match are we watching? We got Cedric and Randy, I assume, since they're in our pod, and I played them, and you played them, so that would make sense for them to play. Uh, we uh, have yeah, we have Cedric on Naya Megamorph, uh, the deck that I played at the Pro Tour, and uh, Randy on just your typical Atarka red deck, but playing McKinney Slide Runner over Dragon Fodder, I believe, as the two drop, two meta red drop of choice. Sounds accurate. What do you think of the the Naya Megamorph matchup here, considering it's the only deck that you played and you're locked in on it? <laughs> Um, well, you know, the thing is, the green-white deck actually does, doesn't have too many instant speed ways to interact. So, traditionally, you know, green-white decks do well against the red decks. Traditionally, the green-white uh, de green decks do well against red decks just because its creatures are generally a lot better. But, because kind of the new iteration of the red decks kind of act as a combo deck, I feel like the green-white decks actually don't have too many ways to just stop you from casting your, like, you know, basically your your berserk combo, if you will. Yeah, that is a sweet combo. Are we gonna? Uh, we have any deck lists to check out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here they come! Beautiful transition. Sick, sick technology. Look at dun, that. Dun, dun, dun. Randy, I wish Buick. I could just have that in real life. Yeah, I mean, hey, can we just have this come up? Bam! Your whole life is star wipes, Paul. Come on. Oh my goodness. Schlag, star wipe, schlag. Uh, this is a darker red or at least one version of it, it has more creatures and no tokens, which is pretty sweet for someone who packed a bunch of Irulan plagues in their sideboard. Not going to names. <laughs> but, uh... Right. Three of each of the combo cards, and uh, four Titan Strength, four Tarkus Command, and, and a bunch of creatures. I don't know, the creatures definitely get overpowered pretty easily by the green-white deck. Of course, no interaction with the combo is is pretty rough spot to be in, because they can kind of kill you out of nowhere. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're just... Once again, I mean, w w even in, in testing, it's like, you know, at some point you're just going to have to tap out and, and play Wingmate Rock or something if you're behind. And if you do, and if Randy does happen to have a combo, there's just nothing you can do and then you just die. So, um, you know, I find that, you know, I don't know if Cedric is playing Stasis Snare. I would guess that he isn't. Um, you know, having instant speed uh, uh, um, removal just makes the matchup, you know, a million times easier. But I really, the only thing Cedric has is Dramoka's command main deck to actually try to stop Randy's combo from going off. And that is a good way to, to interact with the red decks, like, kind of across the board. But no, he doesn't really have any other instant speed ways. After sideboard, he has two Surge of Righteousness and actually three Radiant Flame. So uh, a few cards that actually do things, and instead of just tapping out when you cast Wingmate Rock, which is, of course, a powerful card, and... You know, if you get to untap with Wingmate Rock, things are very looking good. Just the odds of being able to untap tap that one turn five cast is or just not gonna die. Yeah, yeah. Both of those cards are just fantastic in the matchup. So um I mean, obviously die roll is gonna be huge here. Uh Randy's really, really gonna have to hope to win the die roll, but if yeah, so so what happens exactly? So if Cedric wins Yeah. Then so so the only way Cedric makes it is if he wins two O and then I beat you. There's a weird tiebreak thing. Uh, if either he wins 2-0 or you win 2-0, oh, okay, assuming okay. you win and and he wins, then he gets in because he lost one less game, I think. I see, I see. If, I, if, if Cedric wins, I need to win one game against you. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, there won't I'm sure be I'll screw up somewhere. There will be like a lot of probable collusion. But that's, like, part of the game. 
Uh, Kyle, you didn't hear that. I mean, you've done... Paul has carried me on the Pro Tour a few times at this point, so... Oh, (laughs) wow, wow. I mean, I can't deny it. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) it is good to be on the tour. It feels good. But now that I've been playing all these tournaments by myself, man, it's a lot harder. Yeah, it's also less fun. Playing the team tournaments is a blast. Team tournaments are great. I'm I'm probably going to miss the next one, unfortunately. So. Yeah, they need to just have more of them. If they had one every week, it wouldn't feel as bad when you had to miss one. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely. It's like pe- pe- people locking teams ahead of time, just like months in advance. It's really important. All right, so our match is ready. We're going to have Cedric Phillips against Randy Bueller. Hey guys, we are in round five of six here today. On the bottom of your screen, Cedric Phillips, Naya Megamorph, opening hand looks insane. And on the top, Randy Bueller, Atarka Red, opening hand looks pretty good. No one drop, but out of Joe Keep, it looks like Cedric won the roll, which is quite important as uh, being able to get some creatures down early before this Abbott turns on and um, damage starts coming across. It is definitely where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so all Cedric is looking for right now is just to draw a couple of lands. Um, it, you know, one thing I did notice from Randy's list, which is different than a lot of the other red decks, is most of the red decks are playing 10 to 11 one drops, and Randy's only playing 8. And you've actually seen this happen a few times already. You know, Randy keeping a, no la- uh, a, a, cre- a hand with no one drops in this, in this hand, and then also keeping, you know, a, basically a hand with no creatures against me as well. Yep. Yeah, there just aren't a lot. You can't do much about it when you're just not playing that many creatures total. There, there's so many spells in the deck, and you still need enough lands to function. So if you're playing less than a third creatures, the odds of having more than two in your opening hand just aren't very good. Yeah. Looks like Cedric got the ideal draw here. Drew land into Nyssa as well. Yeah, he's just going to get to send in there, offer the trade for Hanger back, which is not very appealing. Warden threatens to pump and just gets to throw out a Death Miss Raptor. Yeah. Cedric That's sending it in. Pretty close to optimal start. I mean, he still needs another white mana, but should he find that, which there are tons of sources, everything is online. Yeah, one drop, two drop, three drop, four. Well, I guess he doesn't have a Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, Randy's got a, a Flame Wake Phoenix here, and a Become Immense, and I mean, he's got a ton of damage in the sky, so... Um, you know, if Cedric isn't able to actually hit Wingmate Rock, he might actually be able to steal the win here. Yeah, I mean, Teamer Battle Rage is, is a good one. If, if Cedric doesn't draw planes and doesn't draw, like, Atarka's Command, or uh, Dramoka's Command, I'm sorry. Right. And, um, certainly a possibility. Yeah, you cannot Nissa for Canopy Vista. So, it's a big one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've been spending way too much time with Luis. Well, you know, there there is a, a, this is a giant no favors to your Chion power. Look, there's a there's a giant lack of Luis, you know, in in the Super League, mostly because he's he failed to win a match in the qualifier. Well, to be fair, he only played several Super Leagues. Yes, yeah. To be fair, he's he was given as many opportunities as possible and failed. <laughs> I think there was maybe one more opportunity. <laughs> I guess he could have played in the standard Super League. Yeah. So Cedric is down to 17 here, and Randy's got, what, basically 11 damage of burn, as long as Cedric isn't able, doesn't have any way to block uh, in the skies. Well, he's not quite at the Threshold. place that he cast become immense. I mean, his graveyard is not very stocked. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's definitely in a position where he can potentially steal this game. I mean, he can attack this turn, cast Titan Strength, and you know try to set up drawing Teamer Battle Rage. Um, if he does that, he's probably going to want to stack Blood Stainmire first. Yeah, it's possible that he just wants to chump with Abbott just to build Threshold. No, I don't know if you want to do that. 
I, I, maybe I said that too, but you do not you do not want Cedric to have flyers that can block. Yeah, you because, don't. But at the same time, you you have to draw Tamer Battle Rage to win, which gives Trample. Well, uh, do, does he? I mean, can he can he just like hit with the Flame Wake a few times? Let's see, fifteen then thirteen. He, like, yeah, I guess he he's about. Yeah, I guess you're right. He could cast Titan Strength and and team and Atarkus Command right now and become immense. Would yeah, it, be lethal next turn. Yeah, you're you're completely right. Yeah, if. Unless Randy drew Team of Battle Rage, I know there's like so, there's a tiny bit of lag, but it doesn't look like he did. So, I I now it looks like Randy has to draw a, uh, a Team of Battle Rage to actually win here. Whereas, if all he did was just attack with a flyer, he was probably in pretty good shape as long as Cedric doesn't draw a planes for Wingmate Rock. Yeah, you are correct. He was uh, a turn away. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, yeah, if if he wanted to build threshold, I mean Cedric is obviously just going to get in there because there's nothing he can do to the flyer, and if that's the case, then Randy can still fill up his yard just by blocking the Death Misraptor with the Abbot. True. Um, so now now there's two tokens, and now Cedric can easily race. Yeah, he drew the white. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Well, Didn't matter. Teamer Battle Rage is is still alive, right? Yeah, Teamer Battle Rage is still it's lethal. Not. If he just leaves back the Thopters, it actually isn't. He's going to have 10 toughness on, in the air. Yeah, so, I mean, I think Cedric here can just... Cedric can also probably just support to play around Team or Battle Rage become immense here, right? Also, yeah, although, he, if, he, if he puts it on the, the Abbot, is that lethal? Right? So, is it, if he goes uh, for Team or, team or Battle Rage become immense on the Abbot. He doesn't have to attack with much because the Flame Lake Phoenix is forced to attack. So, like... He's going to be able to get through all this flying damage next turn, assuming he lives. He doesn't actually have to deal that much this turn. It's not like that like Phoenix is going to chump block. So it's kind of just playing around dying at this point. You you don't need to deal a ton of damage right now. You want to turn on Raid, get your Wingmate Rock down. But yeah, he, could, he can honestly just attack for one here and be fine. Because if he untaps, he gains so much life from the Wingmate Rock trigger that it, it'll put the game away. I actually kind of like this attack. Yeah, it's, it's very reasonable. It becomes interesting when Randy doesn't draw Team or Battle Rage this turn to see how he blocks when Cedric attacks because he's going to have to block in, in ways that he doesn't die, which is, uh, I'm not, can he actually do that? I'm not sure if he no. can block both creatures in a way that he doesn't die. Yeah. So what is, what is Randy going to do here? I guess it depends on what he draws. He's got three outs of Team or Battle Rages. Right. <coughs> See, would Randy have been able to... Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, just... I should be playing a Tarka Red. <laughs> it's right down my alley of luck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The Tarka Red deck does have this uncanny ability <laughs> to, to vampire tutor for free every turn. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So does that do it? Let's see. Uh, sure looks like what? Well, okay. He can only become immense once, right? So become immense plus team or battle rage is plus eight plus eight, so that'd be ten power, double strike, and Cedric would likely block with Nissa and Death Mist Raptor, so that would be more than enough. He can even put a wingmate rock and he'd still be dead. Oh yeah, he should attack with both for sure. If he attacks with both, he wins. And now he oh. does not. But he has sixteen power, and there's ten toughness, so he can only get in for six. The question is what Cedric actually does here. If Randy has just become immense and he throws like you know both of his wingmates away, it's kind of a beating. But what are you gonna do? Not really the end of the world. So, I mean, Cedric. Let's see. If Cedric plays around become immense plus team or battle rage, how much power can, can he put? Can he afford to put a, like a rock into tokens? Uh, eight sixteen. Well, it's sixteen. Oh, he, he, has, he has to block with at least nine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Are you just That's blocking block with 10? Right. Yeah, so, so how do you attack with the Abbott that was just lethal? He's still going to win. The, like, Randy's still going to win the game, though, because, I mean, he's drawn all first, right? like the Tarkus Command and then become a Menton and Team or Battle Rage. He's still going to have the Phoenix and become a Menton Hand next turn, and all the creatures are going to die. Yeah, but... So he's still going to have lethal next turn. Um, if Cedric draws white mana, he can double level the Warden and potentially stay alive. He could also draw something like Dramokas Command. Dramokas Command would be great. Uh, Wingmate Rock would be very good. Oh, he's still taking a ton of damage, actually. The, the Pummel Dance doesn't even matter. So the, the plane can, Cedric, can Cedric draw Jamoka's Command to kill him? No, he's one short. But he drew Jamoka's Command! Oh, man! Oh! One good top deck deserves another. That's what they say. <laughs> oh. Is it 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? That's not lethal. Right? Why is Cedric casting Jamoka's Command? He's one short. Seven, eight, nine. I wonder what he's planning on doing right now. I have no idea. Does he just want to kill the flyer? Oh. Does he think? Oh, no. What I think Cedric that? thinks he has lethal. And he's miscounted. See? What is happening? Is there, is there a Gideon emblem that we missed? There hasn't been a Gideon, so it's really <laughs> unlikely. What is going on? Every you know, I think maybe, 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 you know, maybe, maybe, um, Cedric no, saw Cedric the. Just realized. I think Cedric saw the kill. Stopped in the middle of his turn. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. It looks like Cedric has not run the numbers. So both I failed at that a few weeks ago. Card found ways to not win immediately. <laughs> although Randy is still going to win because Cedric has. Just found the punt back. This is crazy. This is magic at... Well, I can't say it's at its best, but for entertainment value, it's really high up there. All right. I, I, well, uh, so, yeah, because I was thinking, here. you know, maybe he wanted to play around a removal spell, so he's Dramokas commanding the flyer. Yeah, he kind but, of has to play the, the Dramokas command now, interestingly enough, to play around something like Pekama Mets, or he would have just died. Um, well, but he could always fight with Deathmiss Rapper because Randy doesn't yeah, yeah, have yeah. a way to kill Deathmiss Rapper. Yeah, completely. Uh, he has a fire impulse in his deck. So oh, does he? I didn't know that. I think okay. He okay, yeah, if he has a fire impulse, then, then yeah, that's worth considering. This is, this is crazy. None of those are. <laughs> Don't try this at home. All right. Is this what you is this what you meant? Is this what I need to do when I play against you? No, you can make it less obvious. This is too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if Randy wins, I actually just need to win. Because he'll go to two and one. Yeah, if Cedric sure. had had if Cedric comes back to win this match, which is a tall order because this already isn't a good matchup, then uh yeah, I mean, he does have some pretty awesome cyborg. Yeah. He does have some pretty awesome cyborg cards. I'd imagine, though, uh, one cool thing that Randy can bring in is the Hooting Mandrels, because one of Cedric's main instant speed ways to stop the combo is Surge of Righteousness, and Hooting Mandrels is you know immune to that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like kind of a, a tough, you know, spell to cast, and it's just a force yeah. that, that trades. And I guess Cedric has no way to actually. Build Randy's graveyard. Like it feels like Hangerback Walker becomes too big of a pain before the Hooting Mandrels is is relevant, but it may still be what you need. Like I think this is the one matchup where Randy's actually leaving the combo in. He, he boarded out a lot of it against both you and I, but yeah. uh, Cedric has the least amount of instant speed interaction between his three opponents, so th there's a better chance that these combo cards will stay in. It looks like so. C Cedric's bringing in the obvious cards. We got the Radiant Flames to go with the Surge of Righteousness, taking out all the slow stuff. It looks like he cut the Nissus completely, and shaved so, a few Gideons. 
Yeah, this is one of the few matchups Gideon is just not too fantastic, and tapping out on turn four to essentially make a 2 2 is fine, but I mean, not, not exactly what you want. I wonder what Randy brings in. Maybe he brings in a roast. Does, that, does he want to fight him on that angle? Or is that only for like the Abzan matchups? Yeah, I, I assume it's more for the Abzan style decks. I, I imagine Randy's not sideboarding much. I think yeah. that he's just kind of, all right. Oh, no one <laughs> drops again. Yeah. Being able to combine Surge of Righteousness with Den Protector is sick, though. Doesn't have the turn one Warden or turn two Hanger back that he had game one, though. Yeah. No, no one drop again for Randy. Um, but turn two Slide Runner with double Fetch Land. That's a lot of damage. Turn two Slide Runner into turn three Flame Wake. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's just not great against Surge of Righteousness. Yeah, 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 of course. Man, that first game... Come on, people had to find that exciting. I know there are some lines that you and I might have taken differently that some of the chat might have done a little bit differently, but it was, it was a sweet game of Magic. <laughs> there was definitely a lot of back and forth. <laughs> There was, at no point in time did I have any idea who was going to win, despite having perfect information and knowing how the game would likely play out. I like that. That's called excitement. That's what I like in my movies, my blockbuster films, and in my Super League. Oh, look, okay, so it looks like Randy actually mulliganed that hand and has a turn one Swiss beer. Interesting. All right, yeah, that, that hand's certainly not great, especially on the draw, but... Um, I wouldn't have been surprised at the keep. A, a mulligan is, is very reasonable. Don't know what his hand actually is now, but probably has some of the start <sighs> or none of them. I imagine Cedric just fires off a surge here because he doesn't have anything else. Yeah. Just try to then protect her back. A Tarka's command? No. I think so. Oh, oh, to prevent the life gain? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three damage. Basically five damage. Yeah. What do you think Randy's hand is? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. Well, it's good. clearly he didn't have another creature. Or well, did he? <laughs> Might be loading up the graveyard for, for hooting mandrels. That's possible. Cedric, we basically have never seen play Death Miss Raptor face down, but it's definitely an interesting thing to consider against decks that have a bunch of shock effects. Not sure if Randy still does after sideboard. I would imagine he does, but you know, getting them to, to blow one of those when you have a Den Protector already in hand is, is pretty nice. Is there are not that many targets. I, you, like you can get Nissa, Gideon Token, and Warden on turn one. Hang yeah, back. I mean, there's also just Den Protector that... Can we refresh Randy's cam? Uh, Cedric just drawing kind of the perfect cards right now. Drawing yeah, Deathmiss yeah. Raptor into Gideon, so curving out very nicely. Turn two Surge, turn three Deathmiss, and then as a Deathmiss Raptor, uh, then Protector next turn. I mean, he is at 13. There are various combination of cards that will just kill him. Um, there are other cards, depending on Randy's hand. He has three cards at this point. We don't know any of them. That he can just kill Gideon here. Um, also, if he just has a lot a combo, he's just dead. Yeah, he's dead. Considering that he's taking... At this point, it just has to be dead. <laughs> Lag does not take... Oh, oh bam! <laughs> Got there. All right, so... This is a hand that threatens to win next turn, and this, this is Cedric doesn't damage. have to it. Yeah, yeah. I think so Cedric had to, had to consider just getting that Den Protector down face down to, to get back Surge at some point, but... Um, right, like turn four or lot. even turn three. Yeah, I mean, last game there, there was certainly lethal in hand, and <laughs> it didn't happen, so... I guess this is another situation where it can't too early to call it, but 
Randy is in excellent shape here. He, he has the winning cards in hand if Cedric doesn't draw anything. Now, let's see. What although, although, if Cedric just keeps mana open, it's like, it is kind of hard to go for. At the same time, if, if you actually look at Cedric's deck, he's only got two, one, one Surge left. I guess he also has four copies of Dramokas Command in his deck. Yeah, the thing is, the when you say it's hard to go for it, look at the options. Like, the, let's say you just make another Knight with Gideon and attack for five and, and leave mana open, whether you play the Dent Protector face down or not. You're just dead on board. So you have to go for it. Yeah, that is so, true. So Cedric would kind of get screwed in that sense and that Randy doesn't have a choice. Cedric is presenting... I can't games. believe you went for it! <laughs> I had all this mana up! Yeah. The, the, the spots where people bluff in ways where their opponent can't play around it are typically are mistakes. Like, well, I had to block or I was dead, so... What is Randy... Running the numbers right now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, he can definitely. He can just attack, attack and play Hooting Mandrels. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can play a Command. Yeah. You want some more cards in the graveyard? Well. Assuming that he's attacking Cedric, Cedric has to know that he's probably dead next turn. Looks like a become immense because I see cards being flashed during the block block phase. So Randy is opting to go for the become immense here. And Cedric's dead. I think. <laughs> you never know. There would be no way of knowing, but it does appear that way. Well, this mulligan definitely paid off. Yeah. Actually, this Become Immense was pretty decent in the sense that... Actually, no, he, no he's just dead if, if, if he has the removal even for the, the Flame Wake. Although I guess this gives Randy the out of just drawing like another Tarkus command just to burn him out. Yeah, um, a bunch of wild slashes in his deck too, I assume. Yeah, so I guess maybe Randy was afraid of like a silk wrap or something and just wanted to get in as much damage as he could with the flyer. Yeah, there's nothing in here that actually gains life at instant speed, right? There, there's no reason to save the Tarkus command instead of getting the extra damage. Like it, it might just turn off fetch lands. I don't know if it, if it does anything. But that could right, be relevant right. if you're, let's say Cedric's hand was Wingmate Rock. Um, putting him to one turns off a lot of his lands uh, of being able to just cast that wingmate rock, which actually would, would have gotten Cedric out of this. He would have gone to one life and actually probably won. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. It would have been the maximum punishment. Although Randy would have uh, a handful of outs. I mean, he could draw, I guess not Team or Battle Rage anymore, but he could draw any That's of the burn spells. Mm-hmm. Or another Tarkus man. What happens if Randy wins this match? You have to just win the match and then you move on? Yeah. Or what's, the, what's the tiebreaker? Randy's 2-1. and one. Um, I have the tiebreaker over him, I believe, because he got... I don't know. <laughs> He's about. He, if he wins this one, he'll be 2-0 he'll oh this one, right? Oh, did, did he get two? Oh, I two owed him, right? Yeah. You, did you win a match in each of your win a game in each of yours? Yeah. So uh, if you two if you two owe me, then you make it. I don't think I have to two owe you. I think I just have to beat. I think I just have to win. Okay. Uh, I yeah, because I didn't get O two to either. Or I guess if I O two against you, then we'll be the tied. And It'll I be have tied. To, you're on head to head Point. and throw points. So. <laughs> The double tiebreaker. Oh, no, I don't have to head to head. But it'll be a three-way tie, because I'll have beaten you. Okay. And you'll have beaten him, and he'll have beaten me. But he said I, I locked it. Is that, is that not true? Yeah, you're... You're in. Yeah, okay. Randy... If I win, Randy's... It, it will go to head-to-head -to -head tiebreaker. You win on game wins, because you're already 2 owed someone. And so if you get 0-2'd, you'll just fall into the tiebreaker, which you win 
because you have pro point over Randy. Ah, so then we would get the pro point. I, I, I think that's. I think, that's <laughs> I think worst case scenario, we tie on games, and then thanks to all so, the team GPs, we would advance. <laughs> So there would be three two ones, all with the exact same tie breaks, and then we'd get the next one because we have more pro points. Yeah, I think so. I'm not positive See? on that. I mean, I I don't know how the tiebreakers actually work out, but I know that it involves you and I advancing. And if we say it's by pro points, it's cooler. So I'll yeah. go with that. Fair, fair. Well, there you have it. It looks like Randy was able to take down Cedric Phillips with his flyer and a bunch of pump spells. Yes, he was actually accurate <laughs> yeah i mean cedric i i guess i mean i don't know when the, the right time would have been but you know perhaps it so, would have so, been so what we got to see there for out of paul's pro tour deck it faced an aggro deck in a darker red a mid-range deck in jess guy and a control deck in esper and it got brown three times so uh it's about <laughs> right for nine <laughs> mega warp <laughs> may not be completely broken which also proves how good paul is to put up a, a decent record with this deck in the pro tour <laughs> With the That's biggest nice, target on its back. Nice five and five record. Better than I had. Yeah. Five and five is pretty good for a pro tour. It's not good, mm -hmm. but it's, it's you know it's, it's, it's very good. it's very medium. Yeah. Well, that might have been okay. not the best in the world. All right, I guess we're going to be playing next. And uh, it's exciting. And we'll see how that goes. We'll be setting up for that match shortly. Meanwhile, Kyle's going crazy here, so I'm going to have to put him to bed. Yeah, uh, it's okay. You can just have him screaming and distracting you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daddy is trying to click. No, do not delve that card, Kyle. Yes. Don't double mulligan for me. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. Kyle loves uh, double mulligans. Uh, say hello. Hi. Hi. All right. It's time for you to go to sleep. You're up way too late. <laughs> okay. All right, so we will be back. The next and the final round will be me and Fro playing it out. And Randy and, I believe, Cedric will be doing... Oh, Rand, uh, Randy and Gabby will be doing the commentary.